My name is Lucas. It starts with L as in like, ends with S as in subscribe. Please do both. And in the meantime, I'm going to kick off this ultimate beginner's guide to 3D printing video series by going over my top 10 must know basics for total beginners, myself very much included. My plan is to first cover the top 100 must know basics when it comes to 3D printing before digging even deeper into every single topic in future videos in this YouTube series. So let's make it if I can teach you one single thing during these next couple of minutes, please do yourself a favor and subscribe to this channel since the following videos will just get more and more advanced from here. And for those of you who don't have the time to watch an entire video series about 3D printing and just want to get straight to the point, uh, buy a Bamboo Lab A1 printer with AMS light, like the one I have right behind me here, and 10 spools of PLA. I'm not sponsored by Bamboo Lab and I have zero affiliate links to, to offer you. It's just that good and you literally do not need to know anything else in order to just start with your own 3D printing. But for the rest of you who actually do want to know a little bit more and all the basics about 3D printing, let's get started right away. First things first, when I talk about 3D printing on this channel, I exclusively talk about FDM 3D printing or fused deposition modeling 3D printing, which is the most common 3D printing style used, for example, by the Bamboo Lab A1. And the way these FDM 3D printers work is that it will kind of melt the spools of filament to create all different kinds of 3D designs. Basically just a very high tech version of the traditional hot glue gun. Should also mention that technically FDM is the trademarked name and the actual name is FFF, which stands for Fused Filament Fabrication. It's just like the, the thermos versus vacuum flask or Velcro versus hook and loop fasteners. So if you see either FDM or FFF in other 3D printing forums or subreddits, just know that they both mean the same thing and re just refer to a normal 3D printer. So what is filament? Well, filament is the plastic that is on these spools behind me here, and that is then melted by the printer and what you use to create the different 3D designs. You can basically think of it as the ink of a 3D printer. But there are a lot of different types of filament materials or plastics such as PLA, PETG, ABS and TPU, which we will cover in future videos. So if you do want a little bit more in-depth information regarding filaments and all the other topics we will cover, please do remember to subscribe to this channel. But for now and for the rest of this video, we'll only focus on the most common filament and the beginner material PLA. And if you're a first time 3D printer who doesn't understand anything of what I just said, then PLA is what you want to start with. Now, same as FDM is one type of 3D printing, then SLA or stereolithography or resin 3D printing is a totally different type of 3D printing that uses liquid resin instead of these filaments. We're not going to talk so much about resin or SLA in this video or on this channel in general, simply just because it's a lot more messier, smellier, basically requiring an entire hazmat suit to even deal with and it's just not as beginner friendly friendly as these FDM printers and most likely also not what you're interested in if you are watching this channel and just want to start with 3D printing as a beginner. But something that you should know about the resin and SLA prints are that they can provide much more finer detail and are mostly used for miniature models or jewelry. So if you do come across some super crazy detailed 3D printed products online, just know that that might not actually be possible with a FDM printer such as the Bamboo Lab A1, even if you are using the 0.2 millimeter nozzle, which again we will talk about in a future video. So let's get back to the Bamboo Lab A1 specifically, or more precise, the AMS system that is on top of the Bamboo Lab A1 printer behind me right here. Technically the AMS Lite, which is the Bamboo Lab A1 version of the automatic material system. This is basically a multicolor hub, which allows for automatic multicolor prints using the A1 printer or the smaller A1 mini printer, which uses the same AMS Lite. But even if you don't plan on printing with multiple colors at the same 
same time, it's just amazing to have these different colors installed on the printer already, so you don't have to manually change this before every single print. Should also mention that it is very common to have multiple spools of the same color installed on the AMS. So this way, when the machine do run out of, for example, white on spool number four, it could automatically change to the same white on spool number three. Now, obviously every single one's use case is different, but if I would choose between getting a Bamboo Lab A1 without an AMS or the smaller A1 Mini with an AMS, I would 100% recommend the smaller A1 Mini with an AMS. Or of course, if you can afford it, just go with the normal bigger A1 with the AMS. Simply because I'm changing colors and printing multiple color prints several times per day, and it's just super smooth and easy to have everything set up and ready to use right away. One quick side note, which could be good if you are scrolling through different subreddits, and that is that there are different types of AMSs. So this AMS Lite is for the A1 and the A1 Mini, whereas the regular AMS for Bamboo Lab printers is used for the other more high-end models. So now we already know the basics regarding the actual printer and the AMS, and you're doing great following along so far. Just remember, if you have any questions at all, you can always leave a comment down in the comment section as well, and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. And because now we're actually gonna go over to the actual prints themselves. How do we tell the machine what we actually want to print. Well, there are several different file types that can be used for 3D printing. Same as different types of normal computer files can be printed on a normal computer printer. For example, the most common file types for 3D printing would be STL, 3MF, and STEP files. And STL is basically the most common and the, the PDF of 3D printing. It contains the basic content or the 3D shape, but you can't really do anything to change the file itself before printing. Now, I know you could technically edit a PDF with special Adobe programs and whatnot, but just for this video and this example, please do bear with me with this comparison here. So while you can change the actual color in Bamboo Studio, which we will also cover later in this video series, the file is just shown as one single object and Bamboo Studio doesn't really know what this file is. It just know like the, the outer dimensions or the 3D shape. So you can basically change nothing or everything at the same time. There are again a few more changes that you can do in the actual software itself, which again we will cover in a future video. Now, if you compare this with a 3MF, then that will be kind of like a Google Doc, which is a lot easier to edit before you print the actual 3D file. So in our 3D printing case, if we would download the 3MF version of this exact same project, you will see that you can adjust every single item individually before we send this design to be printed. And again, this is why I highly recommend to get one of these AMS systems for your printer, so you can just play around with these different colors straight in the software, then literally just click print and wait for the magic to happen. And last but not least, we have the step files, which are the most customizable. Kind of like realizing that this office document comparison isn't really working that well right now, but it's kind of like the numbers in an Excel sheet. So not only would you have access to change like the color of the Excel graph with a step file, you can even change the actual values or the Excel numbers in this comparison. But this would be done in a separate 3D design software such as Fusion 360 or plasticity. Now, I do realize that I have made this sound so much more complicated than it actually is, because in reality, in 99% of all the cases, especially in the beginning in your first couple of weeks owning a 3D printer, all you actually have to do is to just visit different websites, for example, Printables, Thingiverse, Cults 3D, Thanks, and Maker World, which is Bamboo Lab's own platform for 3D models, download the file that you want, drag the file into your 3D printer, software on your computer and then just hit print basically that's literally all you have to do in order to get physical 3d models created in your own uh, youtube studio bedroom kitchen wherever you have your 3d printer 
And to make this even easier, if you are using a Bamboo Lab printer specifically, for example, the A1 here, then you can also use a Bamboo Lab's Handy app, which gives you direct access to Maker World, so you can start printing on your Bamboo Lab printer using only your phone, even if you are out running some errands or at work, so the print is ready for you when you come back home. And I also want to mention that something that was a complete surprise for me when I just started with 3D printing was just the extreme number of one. 100% free models and designs that you can just download and print out by yourself. Now, there are some rules when it comes to which models you can sell and which models are only for private use. So please do make sure to be aware of the different licenses when you download the files. But for just normal private use, most of these models and most of these websites offer 100% free files to download, which just blows my mind. And if you are interested in starting your own 3D printing business, then there are a lot of private designers, mainly on Patreon actually, where you can just subscribe to a commercial license from these individual designers or creators, so you can actually pay to use other people's design, print out the physical product, and then start selling it right away on Etsy, eBay, Amazon, you name it. Now, next up is the official 3D printing software for Bamboo Lab printers or Slicer software as it's called in the 3D printing world, uh, which in our case is Bamboo Studio. Some other slicers or 3D printing softwares that you might see in other forums online are Cura or Prusa Slicer, which are mainly for other non-Bamboo Lab printers. My personal recommendation would be that if you are using or planning on getting a Bamboo Lab printer, I just highly recommend to just focus on Bamboo Studio, but still be familiar with the terms such as Slicer, since these terms might be used in more general 3D printing forums or subreddits that are not directly related to Bamboo Lab specifically. And once you're comfortable with the printer, AMS, and just downloading all the free stuff from Maker World and all these other sites, you might actually want to start to design your own 3D prints. And to save you literally hours of YouTube research, the three 3D design programs you want to look into are Tinkercad, which hands down is the easiest software to use. It's 100% free, it's web-based, and although it looks very limited and almost kind of like a 3D Microsoft Paint for kids, you can actually do some very serious actual designs once you are getting more familiar with it. And because it has this kind of limited, like pre-generated block style design format, it's actually a lot easier to get started with designing something from scratch since this program kind of works the same way as your brain does without you actually having to learn a completely new way of thinking and a 3D design concept, if that makes sense. And for more information, I highly recommend the YouTube channel HL Mod Tech to learn all the basics and a lot more than that, especially if you haven't done any 3D designing yourself. On the other hand, if you do have some experience with 3D design, then maybe you already know about Fusion 360 or Autodesk Fusion as it's called nowadays. This is on the completely other side of the spectrum and arguably the most advanced 3D design program out there. This is kind of also free for personal use, but if you generate more than 1000 USD in annual revenue, you do need to pay a pretty hefty price of 680 USD per year or 85 USD per month. Full disclaimer, I trying to learn this software myself by taking some Skillshare classes, uh, which you are, if you are interested in or if you just want to try out Skillshare for some other reason, I do actually have a link down in the description that will give you one month free of Skillshare. This is not an affiliate link, I don't get any benefits if you click on it, but I have worked with Skillshare in the past and I noticed that the link to give you one free month is still active. So if you want to try it out, it's, it's down there in the description. Or you can also check out the YouTube video series Learn Fusion 360 in 30 days for complete beginners by Product Design Online, which is a really, really good video series. But I personally feel that since Fusion 360, I think it's kind of designed for just 3D designs in general and not necessarily for 3D printing designs. I just got extremely overwhelmed with all the different tools and the more mechanical engineering way of thinking in terms of like numbers and exact angles. And since I am also trying to create my own 3D printing business, which 
hopefully will generate more than 1000 USD per year, but I'm at the same time not so interested to spend $680 per year to continue using the software, I most likely need to spend an entire month learning. So I decided to take the middle path between Tinkercad and Fusion 360 and a software called Plasticity. Design-wise, Plasticity is definitely a lot more similar to Fusion 360 than compared to Tinkercad, so it does come with a pretty steep learning curve, but I personally felt like it just felt more logical. Maybe it's because it's a little bit cleaner, so you don't get too confused with all the different new functions that has absolutely nothing to do with what you're trying to achieve at the moment. And if you want some more information regarding Plasticity, the best YouTube tutorial I found is Plasticity Quick Start by Learn Everything About Design. You of course have all these different links and every information you can possibly need all down in the description. Also, full disclosure, I'm actually in the middle of this video series myself and I have definitely not learned everything about design or plasticity. So we'll see how good this video series actually is. And then my last advice for this video is just to make sure to join the 3D printing community in general. I myself is not a community person by any means. I've been a YouTuber for six years and although I do have a lot of YouTuber friends, I've never really felt part of a community because it's a quite lonely job to be honest, just sitting here all alone in my studio and recording videos, very similar to how 3D printing could be sitting here all by myself and just watching my 3D printer. But I have to say that the 3D printing community are absolutely amazing, or the 3D printing communities I should say, because it doesn't matter if you're joining for example the Bamboo Lab subreddit, the Bamboo Lab for Beginners Facebook group, or the more general 3D printing subreddits in general. Everyone is just sharing the same interest and everyone feels like they just want to help each other out, which is something I have never experienced before. Just as an example, someone can upload a design to, for example, Maker World for free and then other people can then download the design, customize it, improve it and then re-upload for other people to use. Still 100% free. And coming from like a YouTube world where every single like LUT, which is basically just like an Instagram filter for your videos, could cost up to like 50 USD because someone just wants to like make money on their viral videos or something like this. I was like blown away of, of just how much generosity and how much just like free both help support but also like like not physical products but but these STL files or whatever that you can turn into physical products that are just available for free for for you and for the entire community and then of course we have all these other 3d printing youtubers who are making videos and either reviewing 3d printers or just showing how a day in a 3d printing business might look like for those of us who are trying to get all the money back from our new hobby probably you already know all about these other youtubers since you have found my small channel as well, which is something that I'm also extremely grateful for. And if you have any questions at all regarding anything I mentioned in this video or anything I should cover in future videos, then please do let me know by leaving a comment down below. And as we all agreed upon in the beginning of this video, if you did learn one single new thing in this video, for example, that Velcro is a company trademarked name and not actually the name of Velcro, <laughs> uh, then please do me a favor by subscribing to this channel and help me bump up these numbers now in the beginning. So hopefully we can start to contact and collaborate with some brands to hopefully provide even more useful and educational videos both for you and to the rest of this amazing 3D printing community. Thank you all so much for watching. My name is Lucas. Starts with Alice in like, ends with S and subscribe. Please do both and see you all in the next one.